Before the Maxim machine gun was invented, there were many designers around the world who developed machine guns, and many unique-looking machine guns were introduced. In 1873, Swedish designer Helga Palmkrantz obtained a patent for a machine gun. Subsequently, his design was supported by wealthy Swedes working in London, including bankers and steel producers. They not only established production factories, but also opened sales offices in London, showcasing this multi-barreled gun known as the Nordenfelt gun in many places around the world. The reason why it is called a multi-barreled gun in this article is because it covers various versions ranging from conventional rifle calibers to one-inch calibers. Among them, there are both guns and cannons and buyers can choose different caliber versions according to their needs. Some people consider the Nordenfelt multi-barreled gun as a copy of the Gatling machine gun, but with a different rotating breech structure. This statement has some truth to it. So, let's first introduce the shooting principle of this weapon. Like the Gatling machine gun, the Nordenfelt gun also uses gravity feeding. The machine gun can have 1 to 12 barrels, and for larger calibers like 1 inch, there are only three options, 1, 2, or 4 barrels. On the right side of the gun, there is a horizontal fan-shaped lever structure. When the top is equipped with a hopper, the shooter pulls back the lever to slide the integrated bolt backward, simultaneously opening the corresponding ammunition to fall below and compressing the firing pin spring into the ready-to-fire state. When it moves forward 90 degrees, it pushes the cartridge into the chamber and continues forward to release the firing pin for ignition. Through an internal mechanical structure, it can achieve sequential firing of multiple barrels at different times. The advantage of this design is its reliability. Even if a firing attempt fails, the ammunition can be directly ejected without affecting the next round of shooting. In a demonstration in Portsmouth, the gun fired 3,000 rounds of ammunition in 3 minutes and 3 seconds. One person was responsible for operating the lever and shooting, while others continuously loaded ammunition into the funnel-shaped magazine on top. At least in the 1870s, the rapid rate of fire of this gun was very impressive. But its drawbacks should also be noted. Firstly, the high rate of fire was achieved by increasing the number of barrels and relying on a strong shooter. This is a contradiction, because to further increase the rate of fire, more barrels need to be added, which burdens the shooter. After all, all actions rely on manual operation, and without sufficient strength, it is not feasible. Additionally, as the caliber increases, the related structures become heavier, making operation more laborious. There are also some issues with the firing of the gun. Operating a Nordenfelt gun requires at least three people. The shooter on the right side is responsible for firing and also operates the horizontal direction mechanism. Another person on the left side is responsible for the vertical direction mechanism. Both have mechanical sights, adjusting the angle while shooting. The other person is the loader, who continuously loads ammunition into the top hopper. This combination of personnel greatly tests the coordination of soldiers and is not very convenient to operate. It should be noted that the 1-inch caliber Nordenfelt machine cannon fires solid steel bullets with hardened tips and brass jackets. This is because it is restricted by the St. Petersburg Declaration, which prohibits ammunition weighing less than 400 grams from being explosive. Despite this, with the support of those backers, the Nordenfelt gun was sold worldwide. The Army generally equipped small-caliber machine gun versions, while the Navy had more one-inch cannon versions for dealing with small boats or incoming torpedoes. Both sides in the Battle of Yalu River were equipped with them, and the Jinling Machinery Bureau even imported and imitated them. The Nordenfelt multi-barreled gun did not last for many years because the Maxim machine gun quickly appeared and broke the balance, opening a new chapter in firearm automation with its new technological advantages. As for the small-caliber rapid-fire guns used on warships, the later French 37mm 5-barrel revolving cannon had more advantages. Even the Royal Navy of Britain equipped a large number of them. The Nordenfelt multi-barreled gun basically faded out of history by the end of the 19th century, but it was just one of the transitional products of firearm automation, 